Hello everyone, thank you for joining uh, me for another edition of Brian's Bible Study. We have a good one tonight. Uh, we are uh, so uh, grateful for, for us to be together and come, come together one, one more time like this. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's. Uh, you, you know how, how how we do. We uh, let's let's jump into prayer before we get into this uh, powerful chapter. Okay, dear heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord, and we bless you, O oh God, for being a great and an awesome God. We are asking you, Lord, to just come, come, come down and and and, and inhabit with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Break, break this bread of life open to us, Lord, that, that, that we may understand, Father, and, and grasp these these gospel truths, Lord, that we may understand and uh, ourselves better, Lord, as we seek to understand you, O oh God. We ask, I ask you, Lord, to, 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 to bless this word that it may resonate in our spirits and in our minds, Father. Far after we have parted ways, Father. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for, for we dedicate all these videos to you, Lord, to, to, to your glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Here we are. We have a good one today. Uh, we're coming from Matthews chapter 22. Uh, uh, for Brian's Bible study, I am your host, Brian T. Murray, um, and we are naming this one in Matthews 22, uh, like father, like son, amen, like father, like son, amen and amen. All right, let's get into this. Starting in verse 1 in Matthew chapter 22. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by, by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which made uh, a marriage for his son. So Jesus is still um, uh, talk, talking to the, the, the Pharisees and, and all from, from, from chapter uh, 21. And he, he's stating that this parable as he refers to his father as his father relates to him by throwing him a, a marriage, which made a marriage for his son, as the verse says. In verse 3, it says, And sent forth his servants to call them that, that were bidden to, to the wedding, and they would not come. In verse 4, it says, uh, again, he sent forth... Uh, other servants saying, "Tell them which, which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my my dinner, uh, my my ox and, and my fatlings are killed. All things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Amen." So, this uh, parable is is uh, uh, he Jesus is pointing a picture, paint, painting a picture rather. He, he's painting a, a picture. For, for these Pharisees and scribes to, to, to understand, I am my father's son. He is referring to, to God, but he's painting a picture where Jesus plays an intricate role uh, uh, in this wedding. Okay, so I can imagine the Pharisees were receiving this, hearing this, and they're like, oh, this is different. But he's clearly painting a picture, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know Jesus have, 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 have come into your life. You, you don't know how, how, how to deal with him. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, in, in, in verse 3, as we just read, and sent forth his servants to call them that, that they were bidden to, to the wedding, and they would not come. So, so he's referring to uh, the servants of, of, of the Father. So, so he's referring to prophets, prophetess. Uh, apostles, teachers, they're trying to call people to, to, to come into the uh, the wedding. We're referring to getting saved, okay? It's because he's calling the people to, to come unto Christ to be his, his uh, bride, okay? So, here, here we are in verse 4. It says, uh, again, he went forth, uh, and, and he sent forth, I'm sorry, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my, my dinner, my, my oxen and fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Come as you are. 
Jesus already made preparations. He paid the price. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. In verse 5, but they made light of it. They went their way, one to his uh, farm and another to his uh, to, to his merchandise. Verse 6, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So in verse 5 and in verse 6, we're, we're dealing with two, two different groups here. The first group is we're, we're dealing with the group that are just totally indifferent to the word of God. Just totally indifferent. Okay. One went to his farm. He went back to his old life. Uh, a, another went to, 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 to his merchandise in, in terms of business as usual. In verse 6, the remnant took his servants. So the first group was indifferent. The second group is hostile. In verse 6 it says, And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So they took the servants, manhandled, and treated them spitefully, uh, assaulted, and killed them. In verse 7, And when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their, their city. So in verse 7, he is re referring to... Um, uh, why I stood the word here. So, so, so God hears of this, and he he, he was angry. He sent forth his, his armies. So Jesus is painting this picture. He he's giving his scenario, but he's referring to a specific moment in time. So we we are we want to circle uh, 70 A.D. where the Romans came in and wiped out the the temple in, in Jerusalem and murdered uh, 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 Jews. Okay. So now the Ro the Romans were doing God's bidding. That, that's why Jesus in this parable in verse seven he he he, he is saying his armies is because people are, people and entities are doing God's bidding and, and not even aware of it. Okay, we're dealing with the all powerful God. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, and he destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Now, the, if he's king, that means the city belongs to him. But what he's referring to is because the people denounce God, God is now denouncing them. Okay? It's kind of difficult to call on to the name of the Lord who, who you totally ignored and were hostile to, towards his, his servants. Okay? In verse 8. Then saith he to, to his uh, servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not uh, worthy. In verse 9, so go ye therefore into the highways. So the wedding doesn't stop, okay? The wedding do doesn't stop. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as uh, as many as ye shall find, bid to the uh, the marriage. So, so th this suggests the first parameters refer to people who were uh, more kin to the, the situation, referring to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the leaders. Uh, the the religious leaders and and, and people who, who who were churchish. <laughs> hmm. That is a, a a new show for for for, for uh, 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 Kenya Barris. <laughs> churches. <laughs> so they they were knowledgeable of the king and his son, but they ignored him. So the second strategy is go back out and go further out. Go in verse nine it says, "Go therefore into the highways, and as many that ye shall find, bid to the, the marriage." To, to, to take it further in verse ten, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. So those who weren't uh, generationally of the Hebrew people. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So we, we find the gospel call, crossing religious lines, if you will, but definitely racial lines. Okay. The gospel is now opening up to uh, traditionally 
the people of the Europeans okay we are dealing with the Samaritans all right uh, um, uh, who, who, who were who, who were in the Old Testament a brown people How, however uh, 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 we, we find people being switched out uh, over time over di dispensations of, of time okay so we have a different looking people <laughs> which by the way that's how your church should, should look I I I want I, I want to call call in, into question if your whole church depending on the the size if if your whole church look one color is one race something's wrong okay I'm just throwing that out there I don't mean that the churches that have 15 people <laughs> that is like 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 a family. I'm talking about community churches. All right. Now, now I I, I get it. If it's a, a community church, that means the people who are in, in in the community look a certain way. But if your ministry is worldwide, meaning especially through technology, it, 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 it's like no, 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 no. The, the, um, it has to get to a point where people cross lines. We are in, in this in, in this uh, social unrest now is because we are doing the hard work by by crossing racial lines. Okay, we have more people standing up for for Black Lives, more, more people that don't look like me that that standing up for uh, Black Lives Matter more than, than any other time. Okay, so so this is quite important. So the king, because the ones who, who were churchish, <laughs> who were typically prone to be more attracted to, to, to the wedding, the first group was indifferent. The second group was hostile. So, so the king dealt with, with them. So he told the servants, get back out there, go into the highways. And then they brought it back a, a, an assortment, a, a assortment of people. And verse 10 says, all as many as they were found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Mission accomplished. Okay. Now, in, in this parable, we go from going from uh, 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 everyone's here. Now we're, we're going to the judgment dispensation of this wedding. Watch this in verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and, and, and got, gathered those together, all as many as were found, both bad and good, and the wedding was friends. We, 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 we guess, all right, I, I just read that in verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he, there, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Hmm. So, think about the, the, the saying that uh, we have to put on the whole, the, the, the scripture rather, put on the whole armor of God. We have to put on his righteousness. We have to put on Jesus. <laughs> this is what, what, what it is referring to is because all those, those, those three things is considered the wedding garment. In verse 12, and when he said unto him, friend, how cameth thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. So we're dealing with judgment. Okay. When when the judgment of the Lord come unto you, is nothing that you can, can say. Okay? Because you were given an invitation, you was given every opportunity to be prepared for it, but for whatever reason, he, he said, friend, how came of thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless amen amen so that's that's just a snapshot of what judgment is going to to, to look like that see in, in in this in this world especially in this country you know it, it, it's all about debating and all the other stuff about uh, we, we're, we're we're not we're not going to have <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not, not, not doing judgment. No, not new, no. not happening, not happening. Amen. Verse 13, then said the king to, to the servants, bind him 
hand and foot and take him away uh, away and cast him uh, into utter darkness and there shall be a weeping and gnashing of teeth so he is uh, Jesus in, in, in his parable is talking about those who will not put on righteousness because that is, that is in this parable considered the wedding garment so, so those who refuse to put on righteousness shall be cast out in utter darkness and, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of, of, of teeth and that is what being outside of God is okay when, when, when you when, when you are willfully rebellious to what to what he he asked you to do amen amen willfully re rebellious see that it that is what I, I know we think about sins as in plural like like the, the general sins. I mean even the most holy of a sin every day okay but when you come to the term sin s-i-n singular sin means uh, uh, re rebellion towards God and his known will that's what it is that's what sin is is when you are uh, 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 knowledgeable of it and you still won't do it that's when it is a, a, a problem and you're cast out into inner darkness and there shall be <laughs> <laughs> that is a promise. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here it is. For many are called, but few are chosen. So for years, I, I did not understand. It's like, what does this mean? This is what what would it mean? Many are, are called, as Jesus point, points out in his uh, parable, but few are chosen because th the ones who are chosen are the ones who have been predestined. Uh, 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 chosen by by God is because in this realm of time, you used your you implied your free will. Oh, I want to be a, a part of this, but in the realm of, of eternity, God already knew that. Amen. That's where we get. For many are called, but few are chosen. Because the open invitation in the, uh, is to everyone, but but people who who just just indifferent or hostile towards the Lord's messengers no no Con continuously hostile <laughs> meaning that there's no turning point not chosen amen amen look you didn't find God because God was never lost you were you were lost so you didn't find God God found you <laughs> <laughs> Amen. In verse 15, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how how, how they might their in verse 15. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. and then went uh, the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And this is how it goes in verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with with, with the with, with the Herodians, saying, Master. We know thou art true, and teacheth the way of God in truth. Uh, neither careth thou for any man, for thou regardeth not the person of men. Verse 17. Tell us therefore, what think of thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? In verse 18. And Jesus perceived their, their wickedness and said, Why tempteth ye me, ye hypocrites? So... To define hypocrites uh, uh, again, um, we are we are in the time of the Romans, the the we the, the Roman Empire. One of the social things about uh, uh, their culture was they, they, they did theater. Okay, so in these theater, you didn't necessarily have women all the the, the time, if at all. Okay, so how you supplement for that is you would uh, have young men, young young boys who who, who would uh, play the, the, themselves as a male and then switch it into costume and play themselves as a female. Now this is what's called a hypocrite. It is is actually called a hypocrite, which means someone who is playing multiple roles 
And that's what a hypocrite is. You say you're for this, but you're really for that. Okay? That is what a, a, a hypocrite is. So when Jesus uses the word hypocrite, he only uses it towards church people. <laughs> Amen. He, he, he doesn't use it towards, uh, if you will, um, sinners, people who, who don't know. No, sinners are who, who, who they are. It, it, it's only us uh, people associated with for the church that does all, all this extra stuff. Okay, so, yeah. In verse 19, th this is how he re responds to this. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto him, who is this image in superscription? Verse 21, they say unto him, Caesar, Caesar's. And then he said unto, unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Verse 22, and when they heard, heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. So um, I had a uh, encounter that, that, that involved this uh, verse here in verse 21. Years ago, uh, after I graduated from, from college, uh, I, I had difficulty find, finding employment, which which is pr pretty natural, especially during you know the, the, this COVID time. COVID time, but you know a, a, after college, I, I have to find a job. Okay, so I got a, a hookup through a roommate of of my ex girlfriend. Uh, it was with the Parks and Recreation Department. Park Arts and Rec. Uh, imagine that. Okay. So um, I, I, I'm interviewing with, with the gentleman. Everything is going cool. Everything's fine. The moment I mention that I can't work on the Sabbath or Saturday, which here, here I, I am, I still don't do that. I don't go into work. Even when when it's busy and, 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 and years past they want me to come in, it's like no, I'll, I'll come in on Sunday, but 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 I'm not coming in on, on Saturday. I'm like okay, fine. Um, even now I won't log, log on on a Saturday to, to do any work uh, any work for work. I, I won't I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it. I, I still don't do it. The moment I said that in the interview. He paused because later did he share that that he was a newly uh, ordained minister or, or something like like that. So so that became a lecture time. It's like I'm sitting there. I'm like, look, I'm just trying to get a job. That that that's what I'm thinking to, to myself. I'm just trying to to uh, to uh, get hired. But you know, the the Lord is the the Lord is the Lord of open doors and closed doors okay okay it's because that interview which was going great turned into a very uncomfortable situation so so that was very disappointing because I believe I was out of a job for another month and a half see the, the thing about unemployment is you don't know when it's going to stop <laughs> Okay, it's different when, when you know, oh, oh, okay, I'm out of work for 90 days. Okay, I, I, I'll just hang tough. No, the thing with unemployment is you don't know how long it's going to be. I don't care how gifted, how talented, how savvy you are with, with, with social media, LinkedIn, all that. You just never know. <laughs> I had a, a very uncomfortable and heartbreaking experience where I... Uh, got hired for, for, for a job only to find out when, when I reported on, on, on my first day that they had a hiring freeze. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here we are. In verse 23, the same day came, the, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no re resurrection, and asked him, 
Saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up a seed unto his, unto his brother. In verse 25, now therefore were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married his wife, deceased, having no, no issue, left his wife unto his brother. In verse 26, and likewise the second, also the third, unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. <laughs> He's a, a joke that's warming up. Uh... And verse 30, for in the re re resurrection, watch this, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. And what uh, uh, he means is that once you die, look, marriage is only associated to life, okay? It's only associated to life. There, 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 there's no marriage in heaven. There is no marriage after the, the, the resurrection. No. <laughs> no. It's only associated to, to life. It's because the point of marriage is to raise the godly seed, the, the Bible says. To raise the godly seed. So, if if, if there's no more children be, being born, there is no, no, no point of no, marriage. Okay? So, amen. In verse 32... Uh, I'm sorry, 31, but as touching the, the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which it was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of, of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the uh, uh, living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. So, the Satrasee, These are this this later group, this last group. Yes, they are the ones that uh, we, we would say there is no re re resurrection. So when, when when God addresses them, he, he says, "Did you not hear that I am the God of I uh, Abraham? I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of." Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the, the living. So, if he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob, he is the God of their descendants, their living descendants, living descendants. Okay, I know in in, in terms of Africa, uh, 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 they, they they have had a generational tra tradition of worshiping their ancestors. When you deal with Jesus, there's no, no. You can appreciate your ancestors, but, but there's no worship. There's no worship outside of the Godhead. <laughs> there's no worship outside of the uh, Godhead. No. Verse, thir thir uh, verse 34. When the Pharisees had heard that he had put the, the, the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. So so they take, take a turns. In verse 35, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempted him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thou God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And, uh, and on, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. In verse 41, and while the Pharisees had gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what Think ye of Christ, whose son is he? And they said unto him, the son of David. Verse 43. And he said unto, unto him, How then doeth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, uh, and, 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 and he said this in Psalms, The Lord said unto 
uh, and the Lord said unto my, my Lord, so God said un, uh, unto Jesus, sit down on my right uh, hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Verse 46 in closing. And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durth any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. The end. Amen. So in verse four, it's like, okay, so so you you say I am the son of, of David, referring to the, the, the lineage. I, I understand that. But when but when David specifically says in verse 44, the Lord said unto my, my Lord. So so even in the, the spirit, J David had a concept of Jesus Christ. And he was speaking to him, sit thou on my right. So so he sees this, this imagery in, in the spirit. And, and until I make my thy enemies thy footstool. So Jesus predates David. So so if David, if Jesus is if Christ, the anointed one, is the descendant of David, so how is it when I saw my Lord say to my my, my Lord? Because if he's your descendant, they don't exist yet. But David identifies him as my Lord, speaking to my Lord. So how then is he the son of David? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, there, there, there was a time where, where I could not have put that to, together. I just didn't understand the whole ton of David uh, concept. But thank, thank God for studying the word. Thank, thank God for having uh, uh, substitute teachers. I, I'm sorry, uh, supplemental teachers, rather. You, you, you know, the, the teach you the, the, the word of God, man. This is great. How y'all y'all doing out, out there? Like father, like like son. Matthew chapter twenty-two. So we are grateful. All right, let us get into prayer, and we are uh, grateful for all that, that that the Lord has made known uh, unto us. Like a, that's a, a prayer. Oh dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for, for all that, that was touched on today, Father. We're asking you, Lord, to let, let, let this word recklessly in our spirits and our minds way at, after we, we have gone to uh, uh, sleep, oh, oh Lord. We, we we bless you and we live if your name your name up in, in our daily walk, Father. That that that, that we may win some someone to, to Christ just by the way we, we operate our, our lives and how we function in our community, Father. In Jesus' name, we we pray, Father. All those that that have been had that have tested positive or false positive, Lord, with uh, if, with with COVID nineteen, we know that you are the God that healeth thee. Thou art able, and we know this, O Lord, and, and we re receive your healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Y'all have, have a blessed week. All right. Bye.